Welcome to Understanding Flood Disclosure and Preparedness, a training by the Waterfront Alliance of New York and New Jersey. This training series was created in February of 2024 by the Waterfront Alliance as an educational tool for New York City residents to learn about the new state law on flood disclosure and how it serves as a pathway for us to better prepare ourselves for extreme weather and flood risk. This training can be used by community groups as well as individual residents to raise awareness about flood disclosure and the resources available to us in our city. And the slides are available in PDF form as well. This training is also available in Spanish on our YouTube channel. So what is the purpose of this training? Primarily to learn how climate change is impacting our region to understand the new state laws on flood disclosure, but also to identify your individual flood risk and to get familiar with resources to prepare yourself. Let's begin by talking about our region and the current climate and flood conditions we experience. New York City experiences four main climate hazards. Outside of extreme heat, all the rest impact our flood risk. That includes coastal storms, such as hurricanes, sea level rise, and extreme rainfall. Climate change is impacting all of these events, leading to more frequent and more destructive hurricanes, increased tidal flooding and groundwater table rise, and flooding in non-coastal areas. As an example of how we are already seeing the impacts of climate change in our neighborhoods, the pictures on this slide are from the September 29, 2023 extreme rain event that led to flood conditions in all five boroughs of New York City. Here, you can see that flooding is in residential neighborhoods, on roads and streets, affecting transit and driving conditions. So in terms of our greater communities and the residents of New York City, what are the issues that we're seeing? Well, we're seeing new or increased flooding in our neighborhoods. So this means increases in flooding in coastal areas that have historically resided in flood risk zones, such as Coney Island or the Rockaways, as well as new flooding in neighborhoods that have historically had little to no flood risk, such as neighborhoods that might be a bit more inland. We're seeing flooding not only on streets, but also in train stations, parks, community gathering areas, and parking lots. As a consequence of this flooding, we're also seeing water damage and maybe even property loss. Homes that have flooded previously are more likely to flood again, and flood damage can cost tens of thousands of dollars to remedy. We're also seeing a very real risk of injury or death. Residents in basement apartments are especially susceptible, as they can be quickly overwhelmed by water. During Hurricane Ida in 2021, 13 people died across the city who lived in basement apartments. However, water damage from flooding can also lead to hazardous mold conditions that severely impact our health. We are also seeing long timelines for resilience infrastructure. Many residents are only just starting to see projects being planned for their communities. Lots of community visioning has happened, but resources are scarce. Since two thirds of New York City residents rent their apartment and cannot rely on their landlord to implement sufficient flood protection retrofits, we need infrastructure and we also need to be prepared for an extreme weather emergency. So let's talk about flood disclosure and an overview of the law. First, I'm going to outline a couple key terms. The first is FEMA, which is the Federal Emergency Management Agency. FEMA creates maps of where flooding is likely to occur in cities across the country. 
and it also manages and standardizes flood insurance, which I'll get to in a bit. Floodplain. The FEMA definition of this word is any land area susceptible to being inundated by flood waters from any source. In other words, it's any area at risk of flooding and is often a low-lying area near a body of water. The special flood hazard area and the moderate risk flood hazard area are two terms that sound a bit complicated, but they're very similar. They both indicate an area at risk of flooding during a different type of flood event. For the special flood hazard area, this is an area at risk of flooding during a 100-year flood event, which has historically been a flood event such as a storm or hurricane with a 1% chance of happening in any given year. The moderate risk flood hazard area is the same. It's an area at risk of flooding, but this, in this case, during a 500-year flood event or a storm or hurricane with a 0.2% chance of happening in any given year. However, these terms are now a bit misleading because due to climate change impacts, these flood events are happening with increasing frequency. So storms leading to severe flooding previously expected to occur once every 100 years are now projected to occur once every 10 years. This makes flood disclosure all the more important. So flood disclosure, what is it? In this context, it's a law passed in New York City and New York State, effective June 2023 for renters and March 2024 for homeowners. It eliminated a loophole in which sellers of a property could pay a small fee to omit past flooding information. It also now requires that sellers of a property and landlords disclose if the property, one, resides in the FEMA designated floodplain, special flood hazard area, or moderate risk flood hazard area, and two, has experienced natural flooding in the past. The important information for renters here is that landlords must disclose this information on any new lease or any renewal lease. So on your next lease, you should be getting a disclosure of this information. The disclosure form also informs the resident about flood insurance. How does this information help? It informs you and your family about your direct flood risk before signing your lease or purchasing your home. And for apartments and homes outside of the floodplain, not in the special flood hazard area or moderate risk flood hazard area, the notice still informs you if the property has experienced flooding in the past. It helps you understand if purchasing flood insurance is right for you and motivates you and your community to prepare for a flooding emergency. So this form is what your landlord should give you. This is the official flood disclosure notice form from the New York State government. As you see here, it lists the name of the tenant, the name of the landlord, the lease premises address, the date of the lease, and then it states that the tenant is hereby informed of the flood history or current flood risk of the premises pursuant to Real Property Law 231B. It also lists a couple boxes to check, including whether it's located in a FEMA designated floodplain, special flood hazard area, or moderate risk flood hazard area, and whether it's experienced flood damage due to a natural flood event in the past. At the bottom, before you sign, it has a notice that reads, flood insurance is available to renters through the Federal Emergency Management Agency's National Flood Insurance Program to cover your personal property and contents in the event of a flood. A standard renter's insurance policy does not typically cover flood damage. You are encouraged to examine your policy to determine whether you are covered. Thus, your landlord should have filled out this form before giving it to you to sign and before you sign or renew your lease. This should serve as an addendum to your regular renewal lease. 
New homeowners should also see the same information disclosed before purchasing their home. So let's talk about how this form can help you identify your real flood risk and what to do about it once you have. If you learn from the disclosure form that you do live in the floodplain, a flood hazard risk area, and or your home has experienced flooding in the past, you can take the following steps. Learn what resources are available and sign up and prepare for an emergency and future flood. I have icons here of the different resources I'll be talking about in the rest of this presentation. Thankfully, there are many available resources for New York City residents to prepare ourselves for a flood emergency. Flood insurance is one of the most crucial resources to protect your property and belongings from a future flood event. Flood insurance is usually not included in standard renters or homeowners insurance. So FEMA created the National Flood Insurance Program to provide flood insurance as an additional type of insurance. So what this means is that if you have renters insurance or homeowners insurance, you should check your policy to see what's covered and see if flooding is covered. If not, you can purchase additional flood insurance from the NFIP. While FEMA doesn't actually operate the insurance and flood insurance is often through a private provider, all insurance providers that participate in the National Flood Insurance Program should cost the same as FEMA standardizes the rates for flood insurance. Thus, you do not have to shop around for insurance if the provider partners with FEMA. However, there are private non-NFIP flood insurance plans available on the market that are not federally backed. Be wary of those in your search. Even if your landlord has flood insurance and some property owners are mandated to, your personal belongings are not protected by that flood insurance policy. So renters can purchase flood insurance just for their belongings or contents. Flood Help NY is a fantastic resource that includes additional flood insurance information in English, Spanish, Chinese, Haitian Creole, and Russian. You can also head to FEMA's website directly at this link to find an insurance plan to protect yourself from a future flood. Another way to secure your property is to retrofit it against flooding. If you rent your apartment, you can ask your landlord if they have retrofitted your building to mitigate flood damage. Homeowners and landlords can often make relatively inexpensive upgrades to their buildings to mitigate flood damage. You can go to Flood Help NY, the website mentioned on the previous slide, to see the best retrofits against flood damage. They have recommendations as well as estimated costs for these services. All residents should also be aware of their city designated evacuation shelter in case of a hurricane. Shelters are often public buildings, such as schools, that have emergency preparation plans in place. Evacuation is often a very stressful process and knowing your shelter location before an evacuation warning is essential. Head to Know Your Zone, the website featured here, to find yours. Preparing for an emergency is also one of the most essential things you can do to prepare for a flood event. Signing up for Notify NYC to get alerts when extreme weather is coming to your region is one of our most important recommendations. You can receive alerts in the form of text messages, telephone calls, or emails. So whichever form is the most convenient for you and the program alerts tell you what type of weather is coming and what you should do in case that weather event affects you. You can also make an emergency plan. The Office of Emergency Management has created a guide to learn how to best prepare yourself and your family for a potential evacuation. The guide will teach you what to pack in a go bag, what essential medical and personal information to always have accessible, and how to pick a secure meeting place for you and your family members. 
Both Notify NYC and My Emergency Plan are available in English, Spanish, Chinese, Korean, Arabic, Russian, Haitian Creole, French, Bengali, Urdu, Italian, Polish, and Yiddish. Quick tips for renters and homeowners. This is from the Rainfall Ready website from New York City Department of Environmental Protection. After being alerted of an approaching storm, stock up on food, water, medicines, and batteries for 24 hours so you don't need to leave the house. Stay aware of potential evacuation alerts and make sure your go bag is ready. Remove any items you own from the basement and entryway of your building and visually survey the property for locations where floodwaters might enter the building, including foundation wall cracks, gaps, exterior stairs or sloped driveways, and basement or cellar floor drains. Set up sandbags and ask your landlord to fix these areas in the future. Now that we've provided an overview of the flood disclosure law, New York City resources, and quick tips to protect yourself in case of a flood event. Here are some frequently asked questions. What should I do if my landlord does not give me a flood disclosure notice form? Some landlords may not be aware of this new law. If you realize you were not given a notice form, first ask your landlord for one. You can use the interactive map on the Flood Help NY homepage to find your real flood risk yourself if your landlord never provides you with a form. So if you wanna learn whether your apartment is in the special flood hazard area, the moderate risk flood hazard area, or the floodplain, you can go to that map and check it out for yourself. If your home floods and the flood risk of the property was never disclosed to you, you can call 311 and ask for the tenant helpline to speak to a tenant support specialist. If your home floods and you find out the flood disclosure form was not filled out correctly, so you were unaware of your flood risk in that apartment, you can also call 311 and ask for the tenant helpline. In conclusion, New York State's flood disclosure law ensures residents are given the information and transparency they deserve regarding their flood risk today. Understanding our flood risk provides us with the foundation to make the best informed decision about where we choose to call home. However, disclosure does not protect us by itself. Residents must become familiar with climate hazards, extreme weather, and how to prepare for an emergency with the resources we have available. Thank you for listening to this presentation by the Waterfront Alliance of New York and New Jersey. You can scan this QR code to go to our website where you can find the PDF version of this presentation, as well as other resources to aid you in preparing for a climate hazard or emergency. You can also contact us at info at waterfrontalliance.org with any questions. Thank you.